Our tour now takes us to the beautiful back roads of New Zealand and their numerous one-way bridges as we consider how to work one way at a time with our two repositories. We want to commit changes to one and then synchronize the commit history with the other. We talked through how to initialize repositories in the last clip. We then have our working folder where we'll add and edit the files for our project. In the working folder is a .get folder that is our local repository. And we have a copy of that repository on GitHub. At this point, we can create or edit any files we need to start working on the project. For this example, we'll create two files, our home page, which is index.html, and a list of our recipes we'll call list.html. As we add or modify the files in our working folder, Git notices the changes. Note that Git watches all of the files in our working folder, except those we specifically tell Git to ignore. For example, we may want Git to ignore build files, temporary files created by our tools, or really large files such as videos. We'll see how to ignore files when we get to the demo a bit later. Let's say we have our new files created and are ready to commit these files to our repository. We walked through this process at a high level earlier in this course. But now, let's look at the details. I'll expand the repository so we can better visualize the process. Our first step is to add the files to a staging area. Staging is part of the repository and tracks the files we are preparing to commit. With staging, we can store small changes in the staging area and continue to make more changes. Adding files to staging makes a copy of the files and does not impact our working folder. Think of staging like a shopping basket, online or otherwise. We put items into the shopping basket and continue shopping, or take items out of the shopping basket without committing to buying them. When we are ready, we commit. Git then stores a snapshot of our project files. Once committed, that commit becomes part of the repository's commit history and cannot easily be changed. Think of a get commit like a bank transaction. If you deposit the wrong amount, you can't just change it. You instead have to make another transaction. Same with a commit. If you make an error in a commit, you make a new commit that undoes the original commit. Each commit we make to the project repository includes a snapshot of the project files. This snapshot includes all of the files, not just the changed files. We define a commit message, which is a brief description of the change. Git stores extra data that it collects when creating the commit, such as the name of the person making the commit, along with the date. That way we know who made the change and when. And Git calculates a unique identifier, called a hash, which is generated from the commit. Our repository is basically a set of these commits, retaining the entire commit history for the project. Now that we've committed a change to our local repository, it no longer matches our remote repository. Let's expand out our remote repository as well for a better visualization. We need to sync our local repository with our remote repository. We do that by pushing any new commits to the remote repo. We then have a copy of our changed files on GitHub, where we can view them, examine their commit history, or share them with others. And we have a copy of those files in our local repository, where we can also view them or examine their commit history. Plus, we still have our code in our working folder, where we continue to make changes for other features or issues. If you're working on a team and the team members have access to push to the shared remote repository, the process has an extra step. It's important to ensure that your repository is in sync with the remote repository before pushing your commits. In other words, you want to pull down all of your team's changes before pushing your changes. Say that while you are working on your changes, other team members push two commits to the remote repository. After committing your changes locally, pull down the latest commits from GitHub. That will get any changes from the other team members and merge the downloaded changes with your working folder. You can then ensure your changes still work. If all is well, then push your changes up to GitHub. So, 
Here is our commit and sync process. We create new files or modify existing files in our working folder. We add new or modified files to staging. This copies the files and does not affect our working folder. When we're ready, we commit the changed files to the local repository and provide a commit message. This creates a snapshot that is then stored in the repository. To get the local repository in sync with the remote repository, we push up a copy of any new commits. If you are sharing the remote repository with your team, be sure to pull down the current commit history and then push your changes. Before we try this out, let's take a quick look at branches.